and action. Hello everyone, what's up? And welcome back to Hello Mendix. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to work with Git and Mendix together and how to use third-party tools like GitHub to manage your Mendix apps repository in a private Git repo. If you didn't know, Mendix has been using Git instead of SVN since version 9.21, and this is going to be the standard for Mendix going forward. This is because Git offers several advantages over SVN, such as Git is the standard for software version control for companies such as GitHub, Azure, and AWS. Git stores a local version of the repository, which means that developers are less dependent on high-speed internet connection. This is because they don't need to synchronize their changes to the model as frequently. With Git, synchronizing changes to and from the main repository is faster and more reliable. With Git, you can commit your changes without pushing them to the central repo immediately. This allows you more control over what is committed and when. With Git, you have to commit any changes locally before retrieving any updates, which means if you made a mistake when resolving any conflicts, you can still view the changes you and your colleagues made and resolve them without having to fully merge your code with the server in order to see any conflicts. And finally, you can use third-party tooling like GitHub Desktop if you have the need to manage things a bit more closely. If your app is not yet migrated over to Git, simply search for Migrate to Git inside of the Mendix doc pages for more information on making the change. I'm not going to be doing a migration guide inside of this video. Instead, I'm going to be talking about how to actively use Git inside of your Mendix development. I'll cover some differences between Git and SVN when working with changes in your project. And finally, I'm going to take a look at how to use GitHub as your Mendix app's private Git repository. As I mentioned before, one of the biggest differences between Git and SVN is the way the changes are pushed to the server. With SVN, everything used to be synced every time you made an update or commit. With Git, you have to commit your changes locally before you can sync them to the server. So what does this look like inside of Studio Pro? So here I have a project with some changes in it. I've downloaded a module. And if I want to commit, I can say commit. But the important thing here is that the changes won't be synced to the server unless we also push changes to the remote server. So if I select this as no, and I say give a nice commit message, and say okay, now that it's committed, if we go to the buzz page for the app and open up team server, we can see here that there is no commit message. So the app was initialized over here where it imported the app template, but there's no commit message from what I just did. So if we go back and actually uh, allow this to be pushed to the server. And now if I go back and reload the page, You'll see now the message appears, the commit has been merged. These local commits work like regular commits in the event that you need to roll back if something goes wrong. Or you can use them as a starting point for a branch line. Something you may notice is different between SVN and Git, and that is the revision numbers. So here we can see the revision numbers over here for our Git repo. And normally in SVN, these are sequential numbers like 1.0 or example of Mendix Studio Pro, it's now 9.24.2 but Git uses SHA hash strings. While this may seem like a minor difference, it means that they can be generated in a distributed setting, and they can be the exact same on multiple environments with the identical changes. Now that we've covered some of the basic differences between SVN and Git, I'm gonna show you how you can use GitHub as a third-party Git or private Git repository. To do this, you're gonna need a PAT or personal access token, which we are going to use to authorize Studio Pro access to the GitHub repository that you create. To find out more on how to do this, simply Google creates a PAT for GitHub. The GitHub documentation gives a great walkthrough on how to do this. It's a very simple process and you should have no trouble doing it. Once you have that, you'll also need to make sure you have GitHub's desktop client installed or at least their command line, although the command line makes this a lot more challenging. So to start this off, we're gonna to have to create a new app inside of Studio Pro, and I'm going to use the blank web app as a starting point. I'll give it a name. And it's very important here that we enable online services and set this to no. So we don't want to use the online services, we want to use our own private Git repo. Um, I'm just gonna put this on the desktop because I don't wanna forget about it and not clean it up. So I'm just gonna create a new folder here on my desktop called the same thing. 
and I'll put it in there. Then we can say create app and it will download the template and initialize this for us. Now that our app's created, if we go to version control, you'll see we're missing all of the functionality here. That's because this is not connected to a version control. Uh, you can see a nice message at the bottom here. This is not a version controlled app. Use the app menu, version control, upload to version control server to start using version control features. So once we're inside of Studio Pro, we can see this is not a version controlled app and if you go to version control, everything is great out here. So what we have to do is upload to the version control server um, and we can do that inside of GitHub. Now we had to create the Mendix app first because Mendix needs an empty directory or folder to install the app to. Now that the folder exists though, we can add an existing repository from your hard drive and search for that file. It's on my desktop and we can select. Now GitHub says, this does not appear to be a Git repo. Would you like to create it? And we can say create a repository here. I'm going to initialize it with a readme and just say create repo. You can see it working in the background there. And there we go. We can close this pop-up. Here's our repo. It's created. And what we want to do here is publish it. It doesn't matter if you keep this code private, it will still work. Now, before we can actually connect Studio Pro to this, we do have to perform at least one commit. So what I'm going to do here is just change a page and I'll say, welcome, this app is stored in GitHub. Save that. And now we should see a change here inside of GitHub, which we can then, uh, we'll do a commit. And then we can push. All right, so now we can go back to Studio Pro and under version control, we can go to download from version control server. So it's been committed to the Git repo and now we want to download it as an official Mendix package. Instead of Mendix team server, we're gonna change this to private server. And here we need the app repository address. So if we go to GitHub under your repositories, you will find the project there now. And if we click this code button with the drop down, uh, this is the URL that we want here. So we can copy that and we can paste this over there and say connect. All right, uh, I don't want this on my desktop now. So I'm gonna find where my regular Mendix apps are and I store them on my C drive down here in this file. Let's actually just copy it. and can paste it in there. Now with the selected, we'll say select and click OK. So it's closed the one that we put on our desktop and it's now downloading it to where my regular Mendix projects go. All right, now we can see there's no warning message over here. And if we go to version control, we can see there is all the options available here. So if we want to test this out, let's just go and add another change. And we can just add a, a label here and say something. Make sure to save the project. You can see there's a change here. And now we can go to commit under version control and everything works like it normally does. And we can commit that. One last thing you'll have to do is go back and clean up those files we put on our desktop as they aren't needed anymore. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful. If you have a request for a specific video or any questions about this one, please feel free to leave a comment below. That's all for this video. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky and this is Hello Mendix.